So back in 2020, I stumbled across a YouTube channel that kind of just came up in my feed because it was probably starting to bloom. And that was the channel named Dink Pods, which is a really cool channel that dealt with iPods. Essentially an obsolete piece of technology that has very limited value to people because a lot of people have phones. You can play music on most everything nowadays, so iPods aren't quite as valuable as they used to be, say, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. Oh, it's crazy to say 20. 20 is when it started, but, you know, 10 years ago is still a big difference. But I'm not somebody that gets easily sold on things. And I really enjoy this content, and I almost never buy content from creators. It's just, I'm a hard sell. But the more I listened to his videos and stuff, the more I kind of started to look into audio. I got Grados, and I got some happy ears because he knows some stuff about audio. And honestly, audio is just something that I personally don't know very much about. So I kind of gave these things a go. And it's really interesting to understand audio better because I, I know visuals because I do photo and video work, but audio is always something that's always lacked for me. So that's the context of what got me into this. So back in the day I had a, I think back in 2009, I had an iPod Nano, which was a fourth generation. It was the one with the smaller screen and the circular click wheel and they're super thin and they had like an ovular shape to it. And it was an awesome iPod, I loved it. And I sold it back when I was in eighth grade so I could fund my mountain bike. So whatever, years go by and then I stumbled across those videos and I couldn't help myself but to want to go back and try it again. So I did and I bought my, I bought another copy back and I enjoyed it. And I kind of forgot about something I had even though it's kind of been a long pursuit of getting it to work. It's an iPod that is probably not talked about very often, and you probably haven't even heard it on Dink Pods very much because it's a, quite a specialty because it's also another pretty limited marketed iPod. So it's a fourth generation iPod uh, shuffle. I bought this thing back in 2010 or so. I think it was like a year, year and a half old when I picked this one up used on eBay. And this is a two gigabyte model. They went up to four. So what's cool about these iPods is they look super sexy in terms of what an iPod could. I mean, sexy meaning flash drive to most people. But <laughs> yes, it's not the craziest design, but it's so simple and it's nice. And it's round, smooth, whatever. It's got the Apple signature shapes to it and no screen. So super, 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 super cool because it's so small and easy just to store away. My ideas for it were always to be able to ride a bike with it and just have it out of the way and in case I fall, I'm not gonna ruin it. So super cool. However, this was the first Apple thing that I have known, I've come into contact with being self-sabotaged, if you wanna say, in the traditional Apple sense of blocking things if you don't use their own genuine accessory. So, the fourth generation iPod Shuffle, actually it's the third generation, my apologies. My fourth generation is my Nano. But the third generation iPod Shuffle used to use the, the headphones of the time to control the music. You have a switch in the top for your, your, your uh, shuffle and replay, I guess, if you want to call it. It's probably a better name for that or a more appropriate name. I just can't remember at the moment. But anyways, it'll cycle through music in, in order. So it was fine back in the day, unless if you wanted to use other headphones. Because then at that point, you were kind of screwed because you can't control whether you want to play and stop the music. You can't control the volume, which is the biggest problem ever. And you can't skip songs. You can't go back. You just kind of have to let it go and do its thing at whatever volume it's at. So... I looked for a very long time to find a solution for it and it was just disappointing because I had this iPod for years and years and years. I've probably had it over 10 years at this point and I've had such limited use because I just can't control it. And my primary issue with it is just the fact that I can't control the audio. So back in 2014 when Apple released their newer, newer earbuds that were not the round weird, I don't know, the less weird ones, the more traditional style, they let, they put these out, which 
they have a name, EarPods, I think they're called. And I was so excited because they had the inline remote on them. So I'm like, okay, well, it's an Apple headphone. And honestly, for the day that came out, the headphones for me were super impressive. Also not being a huge audiophile or anything, but they were sufficient for me. And as soon as I plugged them in, guess what? They still don't work with the iPod. You can't control the volume, you can't skip songs, you can't pause, you can't stop, and you can't play. So it was a huge bummer and I was never able to use the iPod. Like I was always hoping that I'd be able to. So through my pursuit of trying to find a solution, I stumbled across an adapter on eBay. This, e this eBay adapter essentially looks like an Apple cable with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that has the th three contacts on it that goes to another one, another male, but with only two contacts, which would be the right and left. And what's cool about that is I can use it in my car now. However, the offset for the remote is towards the other side of the cable. So when I'm using my car, I I'd have to reach inside of my armrest to even use it. So honestly, not very useful. But from that, I was able to control the volume of the iPod so I could set it and then just use it for the rest of the day with headphones at the volume that set it. But still not good enough. It's just a really poor way of listening to your music. So a little while ago, it was about maybe a month ago, I, I finally stumbled across what I've been looking for forever. And I came across this. This is essentially the inline controller that lets you control the iPod and also listen through your headphones. So it has the male 3.5 millimeter with the three brands. So you have your control and right and left and it goes through the controller and it goes to your female headphone jack. So at that point you can plug whatever headphones you want to in it and you're able to still control this and you're still able to adjust the volume and listen to, with the headphones that you wanted to listen to in the first place. So they were, I did some research at some point, a couple points actually, because I really wanted to get this to work. And there were about two or th three solutions that I could find. There was a Belkin adapter, there was an iLove adapter, and there was a controller that was a sleeve that went over the whole entire iPod and had three buttons on it. The controller that had the sleeve was the one I really wanted to find, but they're super hard to find. And I looked on eBay this month to see if they're running even for sale because they're pretty rare at this point because who's gonna hold on to one, especially for such an old crappy iPod. And somebody had a brand new in a box that sold for $120. So unfortunately, I, I probably won't ever find one of those. But you know what, that's okay. Ever, ever since I found the adapter, now I can use this, which is awesome. So this is a new one I've got that I'm looking to sell. I got a few of them. But this is the actual adapter here. So like I said, female headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter goes to inline controller, which you can see here has the volume button at the top, middle is your start stop, and the bottom is your lower volume. So essentially your button configuration, only having three buttons does cover an array of controls. So you plug this into your iPod, okay. You turn it on and plug whatever headphones you want to in it. So I'll just throw my earbuds in here just for reference. So it's playing music right now, you can't hear it, but whatever, that's fine. And let me turn off my music. So you have your volume up here. You can also see that the iPod will register with it too. It'll blink the little LED a little bit. I could actually start to hear it now. But the bottom one's volume down. And then this middle button is left for all the rest of the controls aside from shuffle and repeat. So if you want to pause your music, you push it once. If you, want to, if you want to resume, you push it once. If you want to skip to the next track, you essentially click it twice. 
It's actually more like this. And then if you want to go back a song, you push it three times in a row. So that's going to go back to the previous song. And if you want to skip through a song, you essentially, to fast forward through the song, you push it twice and hold. And this will skip forward. And you, once you release, it's going to stop, obviously. If you want to reverse, you push it three times and then you hold until you're ready in the song and let it go and it'll keep playing from that point that you reversed to. So, honestly a really cool design. It just really stinks that Apple essentially blocked third-party headphones from being able to work with the Shuffle. Because I love the iPod, I think it would be an amazing tool to have and device to ride with. But if you don't have this intermediate part right here, you're essentially just left with a brick almost because it's it's very impractical to use otherwise. So I picked up some Grados back a month and a half ago or so. So I'll even show you that for reference. So you can take the headphones out. This is essentially how the iPod has to live at this point because you have to have the controller to control it. So I have my Grados, which is cool because they're only a they're only a 3.5 millimeter headphone, so you can just plug it in, not a problem. And now I can use my inline remote. And now I'm listening to some My Chemical Romance. But it stinks that you have to have the adapter, but I'm thankful to have found one. And if you really want to... <laughs> If you're interested in dappling with these iPod shuffles, if you have one from back in the day, or if it's something that you look to look to try, I actually did buy about 20 of these adapters here, and I will be selling them on eBay so that so people can revive some old iPods because I feel without this without this connector, this is completely useless, and then you have to plug this into something else, some other device. So you know, instead of just making this some e-waste. It's a shame to throw out because they're so cool. So I will put a link down below once I have this thrown onto eBay. I don't know how long they'll last or not, but just, I, from what I can tell, there are not many options that you can find for a controller for these. So I guess if you have any questions, put them down in the comments or send me a message. So I hope you like enjoyed this and found it kind of interesting. I just have always liked these things. Again, this is a clip put on anything. Don't let it go through the wash, don't do that. But yeah, super out of the way, super light. You can barely even tell that you even have it on you. Not a Bluetooth experience, but even lighter because you don't have to have your cell phone on you. So pretty cool. So let me know if you like this stuff. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make one on my Nano and my, uh, my first generation shuffle. Probably won't though, but. Have a nice day, thanks for watching. Yeah.